What is up YouTube? Today I'm going to be talking about my 1994 F350 and how I came to get this awesome truck. Let's start the video. Alright, starting off at the driver's side door. Look at how big this cab is, guys. This was the mega cab of its day. And I didn't have about $150,000 to spend on the newest and brightest diesel truck. So this is what I could afford. And I think it worked out just fine for me, let me say. There's really no storage in the back seat. Not a whole lot. I have a few like toe straps back there, but what you see is what you get. That's why I have my little toolbox up front. But you can still, you know, easily put two more people back here. Manual windows in the rear. Electric in the front. And here's one of the things I don't like about the truck is there's no tachometer. I can't really see what the RPMs are, which I do not like at all. Only a three speed on this truck, C6 automatic transmission, which I don't really like. I'd prefer to have my truck to have an overdrive, but that's okay. First world problem. Seat folds up if you wanted to put another person here. And you can see all my camera equip equipment because I forgot to move it out of frame before I started the video, so that kind of sucks. Sorry. What, one thing that's different about this for my Dodge is the dash isn't cracked, and I don't need to worry about it cracking because it's a way stiffer material. I can pound on this and break it, or pound on it without fear of breaking it, which I really like. One thing I didn't show you in the walk around, it has a cab visor, which is kind of neat, pretty retro. And a Lear canopy with racks up top. I'm not even gonna attempt to climb up there because I'd probably fall. The interior is just in perfect shape, guys. I can't stress how much the interior is just perfect in here. Especially with these Cabela's seat covers, none of these seats are gonna rip for as long as I own it. There's just no way. It's not possible. Let's move on to the bed. As you can see, I put a piece of plywood here and put USA because it's the best country on earth. Nice Linex coating in the whole truck. Eight foot bed on this, guys. It's just perfect for whatever I want to do, whether it be camping equipment, construction equipment, whatever. This truck can haul it. I've never tried towing anything with this truck. I just bought this truck for like fun. I wanted a monster truck and this is what, what was in my budget. So this is what I got. I'm gonna show you the underside now. I sprayed the frame with bed liner, which some of you might say, oh, it was a terrible idea, but I think it turned out great. I even sprayed the front and rear axle, leaf springs, all that stuff. Makes it look so much cleaner under here. Nice aluminum rims. I think they're Al Alcoa rims, if I'm not mistaken. Let's show you guys the axle, one of the coolest parts about this truck. Straight axle Dana 60. This thing is a beast. 410 gearing. And it looks rusty there because I didn't paint it with bed liner. I'm 
gonna see if I can get you guys a shot of the transmission and the transfer case. It's gonna be really hard without it being all wobbly and crap. Borg Warner 1356 transmission. And like I said already, a C6. And this drive shaft in the rear is a two-piece drive shaft from the transmission up to the carrier bearing, another uh, drive shaft down to the Sterling 10 and a quarter. Oh. Let's pop the hood. Now this is the coolest part, one of the coolest parts of the truck. I haven't said that a million times already, but it's true. The 7.5 liter 460 big block. This thing is ginormous. It gets about 13 miles per gallon if you push it out of a plane, about 11 miles per gallon on the highway, and I'd say about one mile per gallon in the city. I did the uh, air horn removal uh, mod where it's just a plastic horn looking thing that you can chop off here at this plastic runner to get more air going through the system Just a hacksaw in five minutes of your time and you can get probably one horsepower increase. I don't know what it is, but it works Engine bay is a little dirty But new head gaskets new thermostat All that fun stuff need to replace the AC compressor and I might do a video on that sometime. k and air take intake filter which was already there when I bought the truck and less than a hundred thousand miles on this motor so it has plenty of life in her. Well guys that's pretty much it. I just wanted to give you an overview of the truck. Let's wrap up in the cab. All right, so I showed you everything about this truck. I didn't tell you how I came to get this truck. Now, little backstory, I had been wanting a crew cab Ford for the longest time. I have always been a Ford guy growing up because my grandpa had a Ford. And I had bought myself a 91 F250 and that just wasn't big enough for me. I wanted the biggest truck I could find for the money. So I got an OBS crew cab Ford. Now I don't have anything to tow with a one ton truck. I don't even own a boat or a trailer. I just wanted a big truck that I could drive around town and look awesome in. So that's what I got. It's very, very fun to drive. It's a little slow. I, like I said in the video, it only gets like one mile per gallon in the city. But that's okay. It's, it's still a fun ride. So looking for this truck for six months, couldn't find one. They were either too beat up, too expensive. People had modified the crap out of them and there's just no life left in them. I finally found one down in Lincoln City, Oregon for the right price for the right mileage. This truck only had 95,000 miles on it, 94,000 when I bought it. Super rare. Anybody that owns an OBS Ford knows that just doesn't happen. So I drove down there just a couple days later, super nice guy, picked it up for a good, good price. And it was the most scary drive I'd ever had in my life. Driving it home in this truck, I'd never driven something this big before, this long. Having the canopy in the back made it hard to see you know, in my mirrors, because these mirrors are a little close in. And I didn't know it at the time, but the steering knuckle was bad. The tie rod end had wore a hole in the steering knuckle, so the steering wheel was all wobbly. And trying to keep this inside my lane was just disastrous. I got home safely, it was no big deal. I cried about nothing, you know, it's, it was fine. But it was, it was worth the drive, you know? Getting this truck, being patient, and trying to find the right truck at the right time really did pay off. I did put some money into it. I had to put new uh, head gaskets in because the exhaust manifolds were leaking. And when I went to re the to replace those, the shop told me the bolts broke off by the manifold, so they had to drill them out. So they just had to redo the head gaskets while they're in there. And that was not cheap. It cost more than a Subway sandwich, let's say that. So after getting all that done, it doesn't sound like a tractor anymore, which is a plus. It drives great down the road, shifts through all the gears fine. What more could you ask for, you know? I really, really do enjoy this truck. I, I really don't drive it enough just because I have my Dodge now as my daily driver. This is just a toy that I just drive around every now and again. 
but you will be seeing more videos of this Ford in the channel, guys. If you have any uh, comments below or things, ideas that you want to see modified in this truck, go down in the comments below and we'll have some fun with this truck. We'll see what we can do to it with relative budget in mind. I'm not going to put 40s under it and a 20 inch lift. That's just, that's not in the budget, guys. We, we're on a budget here at YDoc Productions. But if you guys like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to this channel, consider subscribing. I have a lot of cool videos coming your way, guys. I really love trucks. If you've seen my other videos, I got a lot more truck videos coming your way. So have a good one, guys. Take care.